I Rick from Doomsday Tank Models and I have an update on my next project and I hope you all as excited about it as I am. They get turning out pretty good. So this is gonna be part one of two and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I'm gonna be painting the Soviet SG 122A conversion from a Stumga Schutz 3 OS B. Uh, that I got a kit, there it is right there, conversion kit that you use uh, with the Tamiya kit, pictured here. And um, what that came out with is uh, historically these pictures right here. I couldn't find any combat pictures. Looked extensively. This is a beautiful museum that has this piece. And it just looks great. It, it's the conversion to a 122 millimeter uh, Soviet case uh, from the German... Sturm Geschütz 3 Os B, uh, one of my favorite tanks. Even though it's a short build, so 75, had a great combat record and uh, served well. And here's, I don't know where this open air museum is. I have my um, suspicions that it's in Russia. Maybe it's in Europe somewhere, but here I'm down to, I'm, I've done the base coat on the model. And yeah, I'm using the King of Diamonds <laughs> to protect from overspray. I know it sounds a little ridiculous, uh, but it seemed to work pretty well. And um, I had this idea of just doing the Soviet casemate in the Soviet colors, and then I'm going to do the rest in the German Wehrmacht gray. And just as would they have done that? No, I don't think so. Um, they would have painted it all Soviet green, so there's no um, question on the battlefield who who uh, has that tank. However, I thought it'd be a nice thing to show to have my collection on where that casemate, Soviet casemate, came from. The student good shoots three Os B, and uh, it just really makes a, a, a great model. And I really, I think I completed most of this a year ago. And I still have four other tanks to complete with painting and weathering and detail. Uh, so far, this playing card thing is working out pretty well. There was very little overspray and dealing with this. And the reason is I, I do do taping, but I recently had a bad experience with taping where it pulled up the paint that was below it I was not happy. It was those nice Tamiya yellow um, tapes that are um, basically for a scale 135th, 148th, 172nd. And they normally perform very well. I don't know, it just it decided to grab. Now it was off a metal barrel that I had not primed, and that's probably the biggest suspect right there. This is on another model. But uh, I, I'm still wary of using the tape because of that experience. So I left a scar. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so doing it with the, I use playing cards. I use business cards whenever I buy something on eBay. The, the hobby place that sold it to me usually leaves a business card, so I save them. They come in handy for stuff like this or for, for other things. So I, I, just, I just hang on to them. And right now, I just want to make sure I get all the coverage. Um, on either side of that uh, 122 millimeter howitzer, uh, they have these protector sides, I assume from small arms fire on the battlefield. Very hard to get paint in. So I, I actually glued those last in when it was on a primer coat. But uh, I did not want to do it with the green and leave residue of the glue that it took to keep it in place. So I'm getting the green in there pretty good. And this is the, uh, it's a Soviet green. It's kind of uh, a little darker. And uh, later I'm gonna go with, the, with uh, some lighter shades on my hatch covers and stuff to get some variation of color. And um, yeah, so far this, the, <laughs> the playing card thing's working pretty well. So I was happy about that. And this, uh, this setup is all in my garage. And we're having great weather now here in California. And uh, 
so that's why I'm, I'm getting all these done. Originally I had 13 built to paint, I'm, I'm down to now 4 after this one is completed. So um, I'm reaching close to my goal, and my goal is to build a model, paint a model, weather a model, put it on my shelf. That's what I hope to do. I know all of us, we get in these, uh, that's me adding the lighter shade to the current mix. That way it's kind of a, a gateway into the original color that I just painted. And it comes across pretty well when you use a lighter shade into the original. And um, just put it in with uh, an eyedropper. And just cover that front of that. Uh, and then just mix it. Mix it with the bubbles. Does it very well. You can also do that with a paintbrush. But I think um, the bubbles do pretty good. You can also do both. And it'll work very well. And so far I've got that uh, good coverage, it seems, of the Russian, gr uh, Russian green, excuse me. And you see also I have uh, stowage in the back, and now that I, um, I'm on my way to finishing all the color, I'll need to hand paint all that stuff. My least favorite thing to do, but also it comes out very well. And, uh, you know, when you force yourself to do something that you don't want to do, um, you sometimes get some very good results. In fact, most of the time, if you just force yourself to do the right thing and uh, paint what's important. Just like anything in life, you know, going to the gym, you hate the gym. I love the gym now, even though I still have a lot of work to do. But uh, getting something done that maybe some mornings you don't want to do. Hobbies the same way. Sometimes I get up in my room and I just, uh, I don't feel like building anything, but I force myself to it. I'm happy I did. I don't want to waste any days. And uh, again, I don't want to go too doomsday on you, but we, we don't know how long we have. And uh, when you have a hobby like this and you spend some time on it, uh, me being retired, I have a lot of time on my hands, but we still have a lot of family stuff that goes on. And you got to do that balance. The family stuff comes first. All this stuff can wait. And you just do as much as you can. And... I'm trying to back off and not get too obsessed with it because I, I dove back into the hobby six, seven years ago and with both feet and have probably 90 kits to build, which is not much compared to um, a lot of collections. I think it's reachable. I think I mentioned one time in another video there was a guy that said he built and painted 200 over 200 models last year. That's 2023. And I contact him and said, wow, seriously. And apparently he does a lot of commission work for his friends. So he just he just knocks them out. So I've been coming is the German gray. I'm mixing these two colors. Uh, one was a dark gray, one was a lighter gray. I didn't like either by itself. But mixing 50-50 comes out with um, this color right here. I think it's really exciting gray almost a medium gray and that's what I'm doing the rest of the body with that's all the uh, bogies uh, return rollers uh, drive wheels um, I have am on my board there on toothpicks clips all kinds of stuff um, in the background that you'll see next to the playing card there's a stencil that I use once I do the black coat on the wheels I put it in the stencil and then you just um, you paint the center of the, the main color, which in this case is gray. I've done the return, small return rollers already. And uh, coming up, I'm going to do the larger road wheels. And this, you don't have to buy these things. You can actually get a circle uh, template that works very well. You just have to do one at a time, and it's no big deal. I, I often wonder if this is a time saver because you have to put them carefully into these... Uh, little stencil uh, deals and um, it's called a quick wheel and that's who sells it and it, it does help a lot it gives you a nice fine edge separation between the color of the tank and uh, the rubber wheels and uh, so I really enjoy it I just put them in there toothpicks and all um, I find that I can get them out in and out of there faster um, maybe I'll try it the other way next time just to see if that's true um, seemed to make sense to me, so that's what I did and continue to do. Um, 
And basically, I just make, here I'm just making sure I get complete coverage. Um, it, none of this makes any sense if you don't get the gray all the way around the circle. And uh, you get that nice separation um, like it is on the vehicle. And I'm just laying it down now, making sure I got from all angles. Because once you clean up for the day from uh, you're doing your paint brushing, you don't want to go, ah, crap. <laughs> it's still going to happen, but if you can try to prevent it, that's great. And so I'm going to lay that down dry a little bit. And um, I think at this point I'm almost done with the road wheels and I put the, um, the tank back up there. I know it's not a tank, it's an AFV, armored fighting vehicle, but I like to call it a tank. And at this point I'm going to start doing the body uh, very carefully so I don't ruin the, um, the work of the casemate. And here I'm doing the gasoline cans. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I doing gasoline cans? It's not going in this tank. It's actually another tank somehow snuck into um, the box that I had this all ready to paint. And I thought, well, screw it. For the other tank, it's probably going to have to be this color anyway or a variation of it. Let's just get it out of the way since I got it in my hand. So that's what I'm doing there. <clears throat> one or two of those I'm going to make water cans and I think you have to paint those uh, a white cross so the troops know which one's water which one's fuel and uh, so here I am just starting the first the first applications of the um, German gray like I said I really like how this German gray turned out and um, focusing my camera there And just you just want to make sure you get complete coverage. And it's, it's why I like black as a as a as a first primer versus any other color because anything you miss, <clears throat> whether on purpose or by design, makes a nice uh, shadow look to it, and it comes out pretty good. So uh, I don't worry about it. You probably shouldn't either um, on that stuff. But I, I really recommend the black primer, whichever you use, and. Um, I just go from there. Now here I'm jumping into that. That's all done, and I'm gonna be. I've been using metal tracks, even though it's 148 scale. They have several, um, and I'm putting the solution in there, and it, it's just taking a bath um, in that stuff. And I, I found a container to put out that in. That the white container that you see in the foreground is actually for displaying sushi, if you make it at home, and uh, when you go into Marshalls or TJ Maxx, whatever, you can find, um, while your wife is shopping, you can find out different things to use for your hobby. It's, it keeps me going. Uh, I don't get bored shopping because there's always stuff that I can find for myself. Um, so here I'm just, uh, I've given them a bath. They're mostly black and now I'm getting any spots that the chemicals, the chemicals didn't get. And I'm rubbing on it and making sure it's, uh, evenly done. And I put them back in the bath to get a little darker, and it comes out very well. And this is part of the fun. Uh, I, I like the black tracks. There's that um, dish I told you about. I, I think in most cases that could be used for 135th scale too. And you can see the tracks it came out very well. I like staining them versus painting them, although I may go over some of these areas. Um, You'll see it towards my finger there. There's uh, at the very end where you put the pins in. You have to super glue them in. So when you go to stain them, any super glue you got on the outside will show uh, the original steel. So this is me putting the, the wheels on, gluing them on. Um, I thought this was a good way to do it. Uh, it worked for the most part as a guide, but then you still, you've got to make sure, look at it, push them on. Because once they super glue on, you can't get them off or not very well anyway. So I'm doing the tracks here and make sure there's the right length. This is a Stug 3 OSB that I did for the Africa core. And I'm left with the return rollers here and that's what I'm doing next. And uh, th that's what I was talking about right there. See that the glue marks? You'll see it right there. And um, that's what I'll have to paint. Although that's gonna be on the inside of the tank, you'll st still see it on the front. Uh, if you look carefully enough. So 
painted it's not so bad. I just, I prefer to stain where I can and get the variation of color. And right here, I'm getting ready to um, knock off some of the stain and show some steel uh, to where I'm using a super fine um, sand stick and it doesn't take much effort. And what that does is when, when they're, the tank tracks are on a um, cement surface or a road, it, it knocks off and gives you a sheen to it. And it gives you a nice variation of color. So it's really worth doing uh, if you'd like to go that route. And um, I do it every time. It just, I, I actually went through my collection when I discovered this and redid everything I had done previously and made them look so much better. See that steel look right there? And uh, that's compared with not doing them. So they really, side by side, you'll, you'll see that they really... They really turn out well. Uh, it gives you a little more realism uh, for your collection. And uh, something you'll be taking off the shelf every once in a while. I'm just going to complete the second one here. And I, I like to. I like to take them off and uh, the shelf and just, just kind of look at a tank, whatever grabs my fancy that day. And just, um, and just admire it, I guess. And then uh, here comes the hard part, and that is going to be putting on the vehicle itself. I chose not to show most of this because there's a lot of cussing involved. Just kidding, I didn't cuss. But there's a lot of internal cussing in my head. <laughs> um, so I put it all the way through. I'm getting it ready now. And that has to be joined. I flip it upside down to put the pin in. And uh, I got kind of a squirrely view here, but that's me with the pin in. And putting a little dot of super glue. So if you ever have to take this off, just uh, put some debonder on there, wait a little bit, and it'll pull out. And give yourself a little bit of length. And then you still get that sag. You have to, you'll have to train the metal tracks to sag a little bit, and it doesn't take much effort. And uh, that, that's the basic look of the AFV, the armor fire vehicle, Soviet um, 122A conversion from the Tamiya Stumgeschutz 3 OSB. I think it came out very well. I'm very happy with this tank. I hope you enjoy this one. Next, I've got to do um, uh, some lacquer coverages, varnishing, and then the decals and such. And then that will be in part two of this uh, tank video. And that's my standard base that I like to display um, for video purposes. And uh, I got a lot of painting ahead of me, but that's, uh, that's our hobby. That's what we do, and we do it because we love it. And um, that I really like how that gray turned out. I really do. I, no thumbs down, thumbs up for me. <laughs> like a lot. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you on part two.